Hello and welcome. I'm going to have a little bit of uh, computer science-y fun today uh, using an old model of problem. <clears throat> but it's also sort of the, the bigger picture idea is to show you some things that are possible, even quite reasonable, approachable in modern Excel that were extremely difficult to do in old Excel. So let me just quickly show you the, the problem this is based on, and then I'll kind of talk you through a little bit of the, the theory of it. So <clears throat> this is a problem from the model of finals in 2013, the first year I did it. Um, and the idea is you've got this, this sort of peg game on a board of four columns by eight rows. Um, and you're given <clears throat> a board that has some set of pegs on it, and you can remove any uh, three or more of them in a horizontal line or any three or more of them in a vertical line. Uh, and you can do that as many times as you want and then you're scored on the pegs that are left. So for example, in this case, there are no pegs you can remove, so you're just scored on, on all the pegs. But here, <clears throat> you can remove a horizontal row of four of them here, and you can remove a vertical row of three of them here, and that leaves you with these three pegs. There are also other ways you could remove them. So for example, you could remove a horizontal row of three from here, or you could remove a horizontal row of three from here. Uh, and depending on what you remove at each step, there might or might not be options to remove more later. So for example, if I removed a three from here, then I wouldn't be able to remove the fourth. If I remove the horizontal three from here, then I wouldn't be able to remove these two below. The idea is whatever pegs you're left with, you get a score for those, which is one for any peg in the first row, and then it doubles for each subsequent row. So in general, the further down the board it is, the more you want to get rid of it. So here, for example, you're better off to remove this line of three pegs, even though that means you can't remove these two, as opposed to removing this horizontal line, which then leaves you not able to remove these two, because these two are worth less. Um, <clears throat> this last one is a sort of good demonstration, because in this case, you know, if you remove the biggest line you can, like a four from here or a four from here, that breaks some of your other lines. So you have to do a three here and a three here and a four there, and you can get rid of them all. So that's the setup, uh, and what does it look like in Excel? Basically like this, you've got, um, there, were, there were various different levels of it from what was called trivial. I don't know if it was necessarily trivial. I, I don't like using that word for Excel challenges, but anyway, uh, from trivial all the way up to diabolical. Um, and the, the sort of key sort of difference for diabolical was everything up to hard uh, could only have 10 pegs on the board, which meant you could only have to remove three groups. So it sort of simplifies things. But for diabolical, you can have much more pegs, uh, and it means there are a lot more, like, you know, this peg here, where you could remove it as part of various different horizontal groups, like a three there, or a four there, or a three here, or you could remove it as part of a three here, or a four here, or a three here. <clears throat> and whichever one you do, it has consequences for what's available later on. So to get kind of back to conceptual, uh, let me just get my pen and do some doodling. The idea is you've got this sort of tree structure. So from a given starting position, maybe there's you know five different uh, five different lines that you could take out from that. As you can see in, in some of the diabolical boards, the number is is much greater than five. Like we found six just running through that one point. There's a lot of others, uh, and then from each one of those. Oops, sorry, have I? lost drawing, there we go. From each one of those, <clears throat> you might have more options coming out, and maybe some of these overlap with each other, so, you know, taking this path first and then this path is the same as this path first and then this path, because these might correspond to, you know, taking out the same two lines in different orders or other things like that. So some of them will overlap with each other, others won't, and so on. And you basically have to keep kind of making your way down this tree. <clears throat> now, this was the kind of thing that was very hard to do in old Excel. Um, it was pretty easy to say, you know, we'll go go from here to here to here, you know, follow one path down to the bottom of the tree. But to say, what are all the paths so that you can consider what is the, the best score you can have at any bottom of the tree where you can't take any more steps, that was quite difficult. Um, and this uh, just kind of randomly is on my mind at the moment because uh, my friend Dan Mayo, who wrote this question, um, just mentioned it to me in the context of, uh, of training for the Excel World Cup. Uh, which is coming up in Las Vegas, which I've done <laughs> very little training for. Uh, not as much as I was hoping to, but uh, hopefully we'll remedy that in the remaining few weeks before the competition. Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> uh, he, he brought it up uh, to, to me and some others, um, and we were talking about the fact that you know neither of us had ever actually seen like this was a very very difficult problem. Um, you know we had one hour to solve it, and you you can see in the even in the notes at the time. 
there were various kind of caveats. You know, this is not an easy challenge. You shouldn't be discouraged if you don't score everything correctly. Um, you know, you might want to try these simpler strategies. Um, I think it even said somewhere that, you know, there was no, yeah, it is not expected that any contestant will be able to solve all of the diabolical boards within the allotted time, which was an hour. Um, and I think those caveats were all completely fair at the time. But like I said, there's, you know, this this kind of thing is a lot more uh, is a lot more approachable in modern Excel, and that's what I'm going to try to have a go at. So, <clears throat> having said all that, let's uh, let's jump on in. So, what are we going to do? A few steps here. First, I'm going to take a, a leaf out of Bo's uh, Bo's book, Bo Ridabon, the Excel Wizard, um, who is also kind of the Lambda King. Um, and unravel the board uh, because that's going to make it a lot easier to work with the different steps. So basically, we're going to have, uh, you know, a row of numbers. This thing uh, unraveled be our board. So let's just. I don't know why my number keys are not working right now, but let's see if I can do without them. So we'll just go two row of all this, <clears throat> and that is going to be my board. And then uh, I guess oh, I'm going to be using my mouse a lot if my arrow keys don't work. I'm just going to try. It disconnecting and reconnecting my keyboard and see if that helps. Uh, it doesn't. That's really quite annoying. I don't know. I'm going to try this, but this might uh, this might just cripple me. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so what I want to do is have a number address for each one of these. So I'm going to do this range times 1000 uh, plus this range here. And the idea of this is um, Basically, that I can, you know, rather than having to think about two dimensions, I can just add a thousand to move down a row, or add one to move across. Sorry, add one to move across a row, add a thousand to move down a column. Uh, so this is my. Um, God, I really can't use my arrows at all. It's very annoying. So that's my fill, and then above that is my address, <clears throat> which will be two row of the same thing. Uh, Lose my mind if I can't use my arrow keys. Yeah, no, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to restart and be able to use my arrow keys. So I'm gonna hit pause and uh, see if I can fix this. Okay, am I back recording again? Yes. No idea what happened there, but my arrow keys just were not working for a little bit. Now they're working again. So I don't know. Whatever. Go figure. All right. So we've got the board laid out. The idea is now we're gonna lay out a list of all the distinct possible lines that you can draw on the board in the same format, i.e., you know, the line across here will just be 1, 1, 1, and then zeros all the rest of the way. And that way we'll be able to subtract the list of lines from the current status and figure out which of those are valid moves to make. So I'm just going to add a new tab for that. I'll call it lines. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to have is a start, uh, a direction, which is just going to be either 1 for a for moving across a row or a thousand for moving down uh, and a length and then we'll turn that into a sequence and then we'll turn that into uh, into this format here with ones and zeros so oops, sorry i didn't restart my timer so gotta keep an eye on that <clears throat> so uh let's just think first about uh let's just think first about horizontal lines because those are a little easier so horizontal lines of length three can start in any of these positions so i'm just going to say to call of this uh, and then the direction for those is 1, and the length is 3, uh, and that will give me a sequence uh, of, I want to cross columns, so length 3, start this, and step that, and that gives me the numbers for those, and then, uh, actually I don't even need a 2 call, because any uh, horizontal line of length 4 has to start in the first column, uh, and the direction will still be 1, and the length will now be 4, and we can copy this formula down, and those are the four coordinates of where that will go. And then same idea for uh, for vertical lines. Uh, so a vertical line of length three can start in anywhere down to row six. So we want to call of this down as far as row six. <clears throat> uh, direction is going to be 1000, and the length is going to be three. And then we can oops, copy this formula down, and there it is. So just quickly check 1001, 2001, 3001 is that, which is exactly what we want. And then same idea for lines of length 4, 5, 
uh, well, I was about to say six, but actually we don't need to think about six or longer because a line of length six we can think of as two lines of length three. So in terms of truly distinct possibilities, we only need to consider uh, lines of length up to six. So there's the fours, then we do the fives, and then we're done. So that can start, and you can see these get to the eight thousands, which is the last row, row eight. So that's just a good sense check there. Uh, so then this one should only go down as far as row 8, and we copy down the 1,000, but not the 4, that becomes 5, and then copy down that formula, and again, the last ones end in row 8, and that's good. So that's that, and then uh, for the addresses, I'm just going to reference that, and then we're just going to say, um, <clears throat> I guess, count ifs, uh, this is this give me my so ones in those three positions and zeros in all the other positions uh, and then I can just copy that oh, here that down and then I'm just going to name this area lines and that I will use a bunch so now we consider how do we take a step from here in other words how do we look at this tree and say what are all the different routes we can take out of here well the idea is if, if we take a line out of here we're basically subtracting uh, one of these uh, rows from the board row, uh, and that shouldn't ever go negative because that means the board has all the pegs we want to take. So basically what we can do is to say this minus lines, and you can see here we've got some negatives, so that's not a possible move. Uh, here we've got no negatives, so that is a possible move, and so on across. Um, which I would have thought that would not work. Oh, yeah, that's so I was thinking to myself, there should be more negatives here because there aren't a lot of valid moves here. There's really only one, I think, uh, and I'm not seeing a lot of negatives. And the reason I'm not is because uh, I did not lock this. So this should be locked. <clears throat> and then we can do a quick, I guess, check here, which is sum of this minus, uh, minus the length should always be zero. And it is, so that's good. So now we can come back over here. All right, so now we can see uh, this one has negatives, so it doesn't work. This one has negatives, so it doesn't work, and so on. Lots of them have negatives. So uh, I guess what we can do is we can say let uh, input be that. I'm just thinking in terms of making it easy to work with later. I'm just going to define all the steps. Then uh, NXT can be input minus lines. Then valid. We're going to do a check for each row to see if it's a valid row, and that can be uh, by row of nxt uh, greater than or equal to zero uh, with or. Uh, and this is using the new uh, compact form of, uh, of by row, where you can just put the name of a native function in here. Uh, and sorry, it shouldn't be or, it should be and. Uh, so this is basically saying, you know, for each, uh, for each value in the row, we say, we say, is it greater than or equal to zero, true or false? And then we, oh, what did it, sorry, and, not sum. Oh yeah, I forgot the autocomplete is kind of weird here. But anyway, you can use and here even. I'm not sure if it is part of the autocomplete option, but you can. So that'll give you uh, an array of trues and falses, and we're, we're only interested in rows where those are all true. So that is the valid check. And then, do 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 we want, uh, the output can be filter, uh, next step where valid. Uh, and if there's no valid outputs, then we'll just give us back input. Uh, and then let's give the output. So in this case, there is only one valid move, which is taking off those last three, which corresponds to these here. Uh, but if I go to one of the crazier boards, uh, come on, drag down, behave yourself. Okay. Okay, here we are. So if I go to one of these crazier boards, now you can see there are, in this case, 17 different possible lines that you can subtract off that. So 17 possible first moves in this tree. So uh, the first thing we're going to want to do, because this is obviously kind of one, one piece of a bigger operation, so we're going to make want to make this into a lambda. So we're going to say lambda of input uh, is going to be, so just remove the bit where we're defining the input, uh, and that is your lambda. So I'll come up here, I'm going to name that step one, uh, and paste that in there, and then close, and here we'll say step one of that. 
and that works nicely. Now, what we want to be able to do to make a recursive step here is we want to be able to apply step one to multiple rows. So the next thing I'm going to want to write is basically a lambda that is step many. In other words, apply step one to each row of this. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, we can do that with a reduce. Uh, reduce is a good way to repeatedly apply a function. <clears throat> so what's that going to look like? We're going to say uh, let uh, inputs be all of this to start, and then we'll obviously kind of abstract that away uh, when we make it into a lambda. Uh, so then we're going to say if oops, sorry too far if um, I'm just going to start by saying if rows of input uh, is equal to one, then just give me step one of input. Uh, otherwise, give me reduce uh, input uh, sequence rows of input. So in other words, the, the number of steps in here is how many times I'm going to apply the function that comes with the reduce. And so the function that I'm going to want is remove that first row here, and then at the bottom replace it with one step from that row. So in other words, this row might get replaced with 17 rows or whatever. And if there are 17 rows in the input, then I'll remove the top row 17 times and replace that with whatever next steps are available on the bottom 17 times. That's that's the idea. So then, uh, sorry, then the lambda that makes that happen is going to be so the lambda, remember, for reduce is a function of two variables. One is what you've accumulated so far, which is going to start off being the input and then just be each step after that. So in this case, it's going to be our list of things that has a diminishing number of the initial inputs left at the top and all the outputs that we want at the bottom. Uh, and then uh, the next value from here, which I'm going to call CNT because it's the count of the step. But it, in this case, it doesn't get used uh, because we're just, we're just using this as a counter to say apply this function n times to the input. So what is the lambda? It's going to be uh, vstack of, we're going to drop the first row, so drop uh, ack row one, and we're going to stack that with step one of uh, the first row. So take the first row from ack, apply step one to it, stack that onto the bottom, drop the first row, close brackets lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times, and we get a value error. Sad. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh, yeah, because I defined it as inputs and then referred to input everywhere else. So let's Fix that. Inputs, inputs, inputs. I was trying to be smart by giving it a different name, but then I forgot that I had given it a different name. Okay, so now we've gone from having 17 options at the first step. Remember the tree structure, we're going to have many more left options at two layers in. Uh, so now we have uh, 142 options here. Uh, but remember again, in this tree, some of our options might merge. So what we want to do is take a unique of this. So let's do a uh, unique outside the reduce. Just add to the pile of brackets closing at the end. And then let's see, yeah, instead of 142, we've now got 71 options, uh, another step in. So now let's again, turn that into a Lambda. So we'll say Lambda of inputs. Uh, and we'll just get rid of all of this. And close the bracket at the end. And let's give that one a name as well. We'll call it Step Manny. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. First argument of let. Let's give a name. Uh, okay, what have I done wrong? What have I done to make you mad? Uh, oh. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so I guess there is no let here because I was only using let to define inputs. So fine. Uh, so lambda of inputs. If it's just one row, then step one. Otherwise, all this stuff, fine. Good. Simpler. Uh, yeah, I guess I was too uh, too quick to use a let there. Well, anyway, it helped me turn it into a lambda later. So, fine, no problem. Step many. So this is apply one step to many inputs. Uh, close. Okay, so now one step got us to 17. Two steps got us to 70. Let's see what happens when we apply three steps. Step many. Do this. That gets us to 98 uh, possible next steps. And let's just do it one more time. And I guess, depending on what board we're on, that might just be enough. 
uh, that gets it back to 71 options, so it's it's simplifying now. And we apply step many to that again. What does that get us? Back to 71. So probably now we're at the stage where the uh, where it's not changing from turn to turn. But let's just do a check of that. So we'll say and of this is equal to this. And that is true. So basically at this stage we've got to the point where uh, no more steps need to be taken. Uh, so now we just need to score it. So how do we go about scoring it? Well, uh, r remember that uh, it's basically 2 to the power of the row number minus 1. So in other words, uh, 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, powers of 2 going up. Uh, and the row number is the, the non-thousand part of the code. So we can just basically, basically drop the thousand piece. Uh, so, well, I guess we can even just do it here, score. Uh, can be uh, 2 to the power of mod this by 1,000, uh, and we want it minus 1. We want it to start with 1, not with 2. And that gives you 1, 2, 4, 8, 2, uh, no, 2, 4, 8. No, wrong way around, sorry. I've got the thousands going down, so that should, should be the, the non-mod part. So let's, uh, we'll just make it the int of that over a thousand uh, minus one. And that gives you, yeah, that's more like one for the first row, two for the second row, four, so on across until we get to 128 for the bottom row, which is right. So then uh, come down to our bottom one here and we can say, uh, we can take all of this, multiply it by those scores up there, wherever they are, all the way, all the way here. Multiply by that, then we can sum the rows of that by row sum, uh, and then we're just interested in the minimum of those. And that is 61. Let's see if that's the right answer. It is the right answer. Cool. So now we've got something that we can sort of hand crank, which is, you know, you apply one step to the start and then you apply steps to that until it runs out. Uh, but we would like to do that all just with one lambda. So what we want is to write a recursive lambda that will say, apply steps until there are no more steps to apply. Uh, so that is what I'm going to try and write now. But uh, this can get a little calc intense, especially on the, the big ones where you could theoretically end up going like 10 layers down in the tree because, you know, there's 30, 32 potential pegs on the board, which means that if you're taking out three at a time, you could go up to 10 steps before you run out of moves. So could get calc intense. So I'm going to uh, going to try and make these functions a little bit more efficient before I go down that rabbit hole. So what's that going to mean? Uh, instead of just having an input that is uh, a row that corresponds to a board, I'm going to have that plus a flag at the end that is going to tell me, have I tried this before? Basically, the idea is if I've already checked this and there are no lines that I can remove from it, then don't check it anymore. Uh, and that will reduce the amount of recalculation that I do as I go down the tree. So we're going to start this off with, uh, I guess we're going to say false is going to mean, or true is going to, uh, let's say true is going to mean do something with it. False is going to mean do not do something with it. So let's take my step one back out of here. Uh, we'll put it in here, and ugh, it's lost all my lovely line breaks, but we'll put those back. That looks much better. Okay, so now we're going to say let check be uh, take from input the last column, uh, and we are going to say... Mm, let, well, I'm going to call this input flag. Uh, then we'll say input can be uh, take from, sorry, let's rename this one now, input flag. Uh, take from input flag, uh, comma, 32 columns. And then input is used the same the rest of the way down. And then we're going to say uh, if, uh, input flag 
So this is going to mean you do want to do something with it. So if input flag, then out. Otherwise, uh, sorry, uh, if input flag, then h stack out with true. Otherwise, input flag. No, sorry, no. Otherwise, h stack input with false. I think that is right. So, and sorry, not if input flag, if check. That's better. So, if we need to check it, then do all the output calculations and h stack that next to true to say we still need to check each of these. Uh, actually, sorry, no. I can't h stack for this one because this is this is multiple rows. So I need to expand output. Uh, to uh, can I leave rows blank? Apparently I can't, so we'll say rows of output. Uh, and then columns can be 33, and we're going to pad with true. So you need to keep checking this. Uh, otherwise, we're going to h-stack input with false. I think that works. Let's check it out. We'll apply that to here. And that looks good. And this next step is broken because I've well, broken it, so that's fine. Um, okay, so that's my new step one. Uh, I guess I'll give it a different name. Step one E for efficient. Because trust me, it will make it more efficient in the end. Um, okay, so now <clears throat> let's get my step, uh, step many. And this is my step many logic, okay. So, same thing again, we're going to say input flags is that. We're going to say uh, checks. Mm, let's see. Doing this right. So, so if there's only one row, then do that. That's fine. Otherwise, I think all the rest of this stays the same, doesn't it? see in a sec. Uh, apparently it doesn't. So where is it going wrong? That's the question. Oh. The name it doesn't know. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, I guess I can just change that back to inputs for a minute. Doesn't like that. And what if I use step one E because that's the one that's actually expecting an input of this size. Refer. Great. Uh, What's going on here? Let's try and step through it. So, rows that it's not, so that's fine. So the sequence, 17 steps. Okay, let's just try and do, uh, first we'll drop the unique, and then let's just try and do one step. Let's see if that offers any insight. It does not. Reduce inputs. And actually, indeed, drop first row and take a step one. Okay, so let's just forget this bit. Try that. And get rid of one more closing bracket. It still throws a ref. Okay, so presumably this. What's going wrong? Wait, sorry. Yeah, rows. Why is step one E referring to that row? That's a little weird. Step one E should not be referring to any cell range. Oh, shoot. Okay, sorry. Made a mistake in copying my step one E, so let's fix that. Uh, sorry, it's not letting me fix that. So, yes, I included the reference at the end of the lambda when I copied the lambda in there. So that was a silly thing to do. So yes, I want to save the changes. OK, so that's totally different now. Uh, OK, stupid, but fine. So we'll go back to what we wanted before, which is vstack uh, of, and sorry, let me just, I'm not sure I adequately explained what was going on there. So here, this was my step one 
uh, so this is up as far as here is the lambda, and then this is the argument. I copied the entire thing into the name manager, so I defined uh, the lambda as you know the output on a particular input, which is not what you're supposed to do at all. So that was just silly. All right, so come back to here. We're back more on track now. So we're going to v stack. Uh, do, 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 do. So what do we do? We do we drop uh, mac, drop the first row, uh, and vstack that with step one applied to the first row. And then did I change something? Oh yeah, I dropped the unique along the way to try to make things behave better, but I don't need that dropped anymore. So now we've got 23. Have I changed the input since? Yes, I have. I'm not sure. I remember there being more than 23. I remember there being 71. So I'm slightly, oh yeah, sorry, because I made it only do one step of the reduce. So let's go back to doing all the steps, sequence rows of inputs. And that gets me to 71, which is good. And let's see, are any of these false yet? No, so that's probably okay. I guess there's not. There's not any way that you could take two things out of this that would prevent you from making any more moves, is there? Well, let's see. You could take that five out. Yeah, no, you'd still have that there. Well, anyway, fine. So now let's, where are we going? So this is my new uh, step many. So again, I just need to convert that into a lambda. So lambda of inputs is all this stuff. Uh, copy into the name manager. New, that's going to be step many E for efficient. Close, and then let's come down here and see if we can step many E that. And we can. And do any falsets start to appear here is my next question. No. That worries me slightly, but let's see. I don't remember how many steps we had to go here. Okay, if falses have not started appearing by this stage, then something is definitely wrong. So, why are my falses not appearing? Well, it's step 1e that should be making the falses appear. So let's copy that. Bring it out here so I can take a look at it again. Yeah, I didn't do this quite right, did I? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Here, this out. I'm doing this wrong. So, here is where I need to be adding to it. So, mm. okay, so I guess I need to say uh, if or valid. So if any of them is valid, then we will do the expand at this stage instead. So we'll expand, filter, next, valid. Uh, mm. Just myself up here because I have to mm. well yeah okay so I'll expand it the number of rows will be sum minus minus valid so in other words the number of rows that are true invalid the number of columns will be 33 and we'll pad with true but if there are not any valid rows then we will h stack uh, input input with false. Uh, okay. Now this is my out. Uh, and then I get rid of the expand here. And I get rid of the edge stack. Yeah, so I guess this just becomes 
input flag. Okay, so just to explain quickly what was happening here is I, I had the wrong condition for uh, saying that it should no longer be investigated. Um, I was only I was saying if it starts off not to be investigated, then you keep it not to be investigated. But if there were no valid rows, I was not marking that as do not investigate further. So I think that this is the right correction for that. I'm missing a closing bracket somewhere, so let's see. This if opens on purple and does not close on purple, so I think it's there. Okay, so now let's copy that, put that in, oops, put that in here, step 1e, paste, enter, close, give that a second, and now let's see, do I have any falses appearing? Not yet, but yes, down here I have some falses starting to show up, and after a while I have more falses starting to show up, and actually this is, these are still, so at some point we should not have any more left. So let's just step any E of that one more time. And yeah, then everything is false. Okay, good. So after some number of steps, and this is also, let's see, 71, 98, 71, yes. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so now I think that I'm basically ready to do it. So let's just See if I can do step many E on the very first step. That works fine. Okay, so now I need to write a recursive lambda that will take this input and will run it through these steps until the last column says there is nothing left to investigate. So first, let's talk a little bit about um, about recursive lambdas. Um, no, no, I'm just gonna. The video is getting long already, and it's getting a little technical already. So I was going to talk about how to write recursive lambdas just in a, in a cell, which is a little more complicated than writing them in the name manager. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. So what do we want to do? We want to say lambda of input. And what do we want to do? We want to say uh, let, uh, well, actually, well, yeah, okay. So let's let... Um, say next step needed uh, and that will be or we or yes the or of take input uh, take the last column from input so in other words if there's any trues in the last column then we need to take another step if there are no trues then we're done so that's next step needed so then we're gonna say actually I don't, I don't know if I even need to give this a name do I I don't think I do. So we're just going to say if there are any trues in that last column, then we need to call. So I'm going to assume this lambda is called step to end. Uh, so this this outer lambda is going to go into the name name manager named step to end, and then it's going to call back to itself. So we're going to say uh, step to end of step many of input. So in other words, take one step and then make a recursive call, at which point you'll see if you need another step, and if you do, you'll take another step, and so on through. So that's that. Otherwise, uh, we just output input. Mm, that's it, I think. So that's my step to end lambda. Uh, if it works first time, I'll be modestly, pleasantly surprised, but let's try. So step to end, put there, okay, close. <coughs> So now, come down here, and we'll say step to end of this input, enter, and a bang. Okay, so let's uh, come and look at it again. So if or take input minus one, so if any of them is true, yes. Then you take one step, and then you call it again. Otherwise, you output the input. Looks good to me. Results of custom function can't be indeed they cannot. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do 
as an attempt to debug this. Recursive lambdas are bloody hard to debug. Uh, I'm going to put in a step counter, and I'm going to reduce the steps. So uh, we'll just say if um, say if step is what do I want to say? If step is less than or uh, step is greater than zero, then we'll do all this stuff. Uh, otherwise, we will just give back the input. That way, we can do some potential debugging. So here, I can start off by saying step zero steps. And that just echoes the input. That's good. And I can say try step one step. And that doesn't do that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, well, this video is long already, so I'm going to try and do it a different way. So uh, rather than doing a recursive lambda, which is kind of hard, I'm going to do it with a reduce instead. Uh, because I know I will never need to take more than 10 steps, and I've already got the efficiency checks, which should mean that taking 10 steps when you only need 4 isn't a big slowdown. So let's just do this. We will do reduce of this uh, sequence of 10, uh, and we'll say lambda uh, ac cnt, so what you've accumulated in the count, uh, step many e, oh wait a dang second, did I use step many instead of step many e in my step to end? I did. Ugh. Stupid. So it might be as simple as that. Let's try that. Uh, where is my step to uh, step to end? Oh, I deleted it already. Oops. Okay. Fine. Well, let's give it one more try, and then if that doesn't work, I will go back to conceding and using a reduce. So here. Step to end. Sorry, I need to give it a second input. So first, zero steps. That's good. Then one step. And that gives me my 17, just like it did before. And then, well, let's just say 10. And that gives me the 71. That's false. And it's it's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. OK, so that was just a, just a silly mistake. Uh, so now I'm just going to get rid of the step bit. Uh, all of that. I think that should work. I'll be a little more careful after if I need to, but try that. Uh, now back to value error again. Oh, yeah, because I've got an argument that doesn't exist anymore in there. So now, no, nope, still doesn't work. All right, fine. Let's go back to where I had uh, had the name in there. Okay, so now, now that we've got step to end in one function. I can get rid of all these intermediate steps. Uh, I was going to cut this, bring it up here. And then what do I want to do? We want to uh, drop from that the last column. That gives me just those bits. Then we want to uh, take that and multiply this by the score, which is here. And that will give me that. Then we want to take the row sums of that, so by row of this sum, and then we want to take the min of those, and that should be the answer to the question. And that is 61. And let's just see. Cut that. Uh, put it in here. No, put it in here. Now that's correct. And let's just try another. Uh, that's an easy one, but it's correct on that as well. Let's see if we can get it back down to the end. That works. And now the real test will be there is a, a mark me macro in here which runs through all 140 boards. So if I've written it efficiently enough, it will do that in a reasonable time. And if I haven't, it will crash my computer and die. So I'm just going to hit save. Uh, and then let's run mark me. Uh, let's just start by marking just the trivial boards. See if it does that quickly. It does. And it got them all right. Hooray. So all right, now let's just go for it. Let's mark everything. On. Uh, 
Uh, it's taking a little bit longer, but some of these diabolical ones will have a lot of recursion depth to go through, so that's not terribly surprising. Uh, it's So I don't know, this might have been asking too much of it, but we'll soon find out. Persuade it to stop running. No, nope, I can't. Well, I might cut some of this out when I go to upload the video. Oh, what the heck? Ah, ah, yes! Got it. So, let me shrink this up so you can actually see that, because I don't think you can see the bottom of my screen. But yes, got them all right, 100%. Hooray! That's pretty cool. Uh, so there you go. All in, I mean, you could kind of squeeze all of this into uh, into the one cell if you want to, but obviously, you know, the bit that's... Uh, now this is showing something wrong, but I guess that's just because it got... Uh, probably had calculations turned off for the macro or something. Let's hit recalculate. Uh, wow, it's taking a really long time to recalculate now. I don't know what that's about. Uh, let's just hit enter. Anyway, uh, yeah, you could you could squeeze all of this in if you really needed to, but obviously step to end is the bit that's doing doing all the work. I, I realized uh, what went wrong when I tried to take the step out of step to end because I think I didn't take the step argument out of the recursive step. So pretty sure I can fix that, but uh, whatever, no big deal. Um, this is a model of question, so I can't actually share my solution. So I will put it uh, on the on the model of solutions drive, which there will be a link to in the video below. Um, but yeah, that's enough for today. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. See you next time.